Ranger in Time, Escape from the Great Earthquake, a Scholastics book by Kate Messner. Chapter 4, Into the Smoke. The streets teemed with people pushing baby carriages and wagons and wheelbarrows, all piled with their things. <clears throat> Lily passed a man pushing an entire sofa, sofa heaped with his belongings. He'd mounted roller skates on the sofa's legs so that it could roll. His face was red and sweaty as he huffed and puffed his way up the steep hill. For once, Lily was thankful that she had few possessions to her name. Others had come on the steamer to America with extra clothes and gifts from their loved ones, but Lily had a ride with from the month's long journey with only a, only a small basket there they are walking up the hill there's the man's sofa oh there's ranger wagon wow that's a steep hill whoa It held her bedding, shoes, and a few biscuits. At night, she'd slept on a canvas bunk in the ship's hot, stuffy hold. She'd spent her days searching the sea for spouting whales and practicing the story she would tell immigration officials when she arrived. America had strict law had a strict law banning most Chinese immigrants. Lily's family had sent her with phony papers that said she was the child of a merchant, so she was allowed to come. But that was all a lie. Her parents had sold her as a servant. <clears throat> They simply didn't have enough money to feed Lily and her younger brother, so they sent her off, hoping she might find a better life across the sea. When the ship docked in San Francisco, officers searched Lily and loaded her into a cart with the other paper daughters who had come ashore. As the cart rolled through the street, People began throwing litter at the wagon. They shouted at the new arrived children to go home. Lily wished she could have. Instead, she moved into a house of a wealthy Chinatown merchant who beat her when she didn't work quickly enough. Lily stayed there for four years until the night Lomo came crashing through the door with the police and brought Lily to the mission house. Lily lived with, lived with Lomo and the other girls and women now. Lomo taught the girls to cook and sew and clean all the skills that would train them to be good wives. But Lomo wasn't interested in Lily's real dream, going to school so she, be, she could become a doctor one day. Lily knew that wasn't likely. A Chinese woman might become a teacher, but not a doctor. Still, Lily couldn't stop thinking about the possibility. She'd heard Lomo talk about Elizabeth Blackwell with the church women once. Elizabeth had been the first woman to receive a medical degree in America, and now <clears throat> there were schools for other women too. Lily had asked Lomo about them. Lomo shushed her and handed her a broom. Lily sighed and wiped the sweat from her brow. Her dream seemed further away than ever. With the city crumbling to pieces around her, Ranger walked beside Lily as the girls trudged up the hill. He was glad the earth had stopped shaking but the sidewalk was heaped with bricks and splintered wood. 
He was crossing a buckled street when his paw came down on a shard of broken glass. Ranger yelped. What is it, dog? Lily looked down. Are you tired? It's a steep hill. Ranger tried to keep going. He knew Lily should stay with her group, but with every step, the glass poked deeper and deeper into his paw. Ranger whimpered and Lily looked down again. You're limping, let me see. Lily stopped and knelt beside Ranger. She lifted his paw. Oh, you poor thing. Here, she used the tips of her fingernails to ease the glass from Ranger's paw. It's out now, Lily said, but it might still be hard for you to walk. I'll carry you. Lily lifted the first aid kit from around Ranger's neck. She knelt down, untied her bundle of bedding and clothes, and tucked Ranger's first aid kit inside. Then she stood ready to, care, to catch up with the others, but Lomo and the girls were gone. Lily couldn't spot anyone she knew in the crowd surging up the hill. It's all right. We'll find them. We won't be on our own for long, Lily said with words, said the words aloud, trying to convince herself. Lomo had told Lily the cruel merchant would try to steal her back if she ever left the house alone. Lily's heart raced. As she started up the hill again, a frantic, frightening voice rose out of the crowd. Father, father! Lily searched the crowd and gasped. May! She shouted and held her hand high so the other girl could see her. May Wong was the daughter of a Chinese grocer. When Lily had been a servant, she'd rarely left the house, but one time she'd been sent to the Wong's market for vegetables when her master was ill. She'd met May that day and watched for her out the window ever since. Lily always envied May, who passed by in the morning with her arms full of school books. May was one of the few girls who went to the Chinese primary school. Her parents believed the girls should be educated as well as boys. So May went along with her little brother, Lee. But today, May was alone. She ran to Lily. Father left with mother to try and find a cart because she couldn't walk through this mess with her bound feet. He told me to meet them at the Van Ness, but my brother ran back into the sh shop for water and May swallowed hard and took a gasping breath. The roof collapsed. I called her little brother, but he didn't answer. I have to find father. Lily stood up tall and looked over the pulsing crowd. Even if May's father was close, they'd never find them in the mob. He couldn't help, but Lily could. She'd left gum gum behind, but that wouldn't happen again. It couldn't happen, not to May's little brother. I'll go back with you, Lily said, grabbing May's hand. We'll find him. Come on. They turned and hurried down the block. Ranger hesitated. The air was thick with dust and smoke and fear. That wasn't where the other girls from the house had gone. It didn't feel safe. But Ranger felt an unmistakable tug with Lily with Lily was where he needed to be. So he bounded off after her down the hill.